So any question regarding your meditation practice? Um, who has been here for the first time today? Yeah. How many of you? Four. 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 I'm, I'm curious how it progresses over time. You know, how the longer you practice and what's going, what's happening. You mean from now on, or when you practice? For 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 example, uh, I'm not sure how you how long you've been meditating, but you know, what's throughout the years, what happens? Have there well, any surprises? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can start it at a very young age. And I became a novice monk at the age of 13, so I have been taught to be meditate since then. It was just a short meditation because, you know, for the, for the young children, we can't ask them to sit for long. We may ask them to sit for five to ten minutes. And then when you develop more and more skill and concentration, and then you will begin to enjoy it. <coughs> You will begin to enjoy meditation because meditation bring about calmness, bring bring about peacefulness. You feel relaxed and relieved. So that's it. Um, just the basic benefits of meditation practice. When you practice meditation regularly, and you will see by yourself, you will see some change in yourself. And what kind of change? Your attitude will be changed. The way you look at things will be changed in the positive way, not in a negative way. Um, most important is, the, the most important thing is, you, 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 you feel that you are happier. You are happier. And you are a happier person. So that's the aim of meditation practice for, uh, sec uh, for lay people. <coughs> uh, what do you say, the, the secular people ordinary people. Yes. Yeah. At first you would find it very difficult and because you try to control the mind, you try to keep the mind in control. We need to understand the nature of the mind. It's not easy to keep the mind in control. So what we can do during meditation is to be aware. By being aware, you automatically develop concentration. So do not expect that you will have a good concentration all the time, or straight away when you start meditating. It's like um, every night you go out, you go to the nightclub or you go to the discotheque or whatever, because you enjoy dancing, singing, partying or whatever. And then one day, with some reason, you you are forced. You are forced. It, 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 it's not that you are happy to stay. You are forced to stay at home. But you still want to go out. So our mind is like that. And another example, the mind is like the fish. Fish lives in the river. And when you catch the fish and throw it on the, on the ground, the fish will try to go back to the rework. So this means that the mind get used to the desirable objects. So the mind get used to wandering around. This is the reason why that we always have distraction and rotation. But this, this is not a problem when we meditate. We simply acknowledge it, observe it, then you will say that the mind will stop thinking. So regular practice is recommended if you want to make a progress. Just one day a week is not enough. So regular, what do you mean by regular? Well, 10 minutes, 20 minutes a day depends on your schedule. Mm -hmm. And you have more time, you can practice more. But when you truly understand what, med what meditation is, and then meditation will be in your daily life. You can apply mindfulness in your daily life. Even when you are driving, when you are working, when you are walking to the <coughs> bus stop, you can still try to be mindful. So mindfulness will occur naturally and automatically. You don't need to think about it, oh, I have to be mindful. It will occur naturally. But not all the time that you can be mindful. So don't expect that you can be mindful of things all the time. 
gentle things normally, but what you choose at <coughs> at is mindfulness. That's all. <coughs> Try to be mindful when you when you think. Okay, I choose to be mindful. In fact, mindfulness is always in our daily life, but we don't know it. And with the technique that we learn from the master, and then you know how to how to take advantage of mindfulness in daily life. As before you get off the bus, you need to pay attention. Yeah, you need to pay attention. Oh, you need to uh, keep waiting to hear the system telling you, okay, car on road, something like this, and then you get ready to get off. And although when you're about to get off, you also need to be mindful. Yes, and if you are not mindful, perhaps you might have uh, left some thing wallet or oyster card, <coughs> or you may slipped over someone over there, some or some something in the bus. Yes. So you, you, I, I see it's not very difficult. So when you practice, until it becomes a part of your life, and then it's it's no longer difficult. And do you think, as a beginner, it's better to start practicing in groups? And uh, you know, because I guess it's quite difficult to be by yourself at the beginning. Yes, at the beginning, it's better to practice with the group. You know why? Because you will be inspired by friends. You will feel supported by friends and as a master or teacher. And when you have some experience, and then you may practice on your own. But at first, it would be good, and if you could practice with the support of the master, with the support of friends. When you see other friends meditating, you feel, oh, I can do it. You feel inspired. After you have established this in, in yourself, and then you can do it at home on your own. Is it your first time here? Yeah. First time to meditate, or you have done? Um, well, first time to meditate more or less. Yeah. First time the to meditate? Well, twice. Both. Twice, yeah. yes. So <coughs> have you done any form of meditation <coughs> somewhere before? Sorry? Have yeah. you done anything that like this? Yeah, one time. I've done it once, yeah, before. Not here? No, not here. Oh, okay, yeah. So y you know what meditation is then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read books yeah. and uh, just, uh, mm. I think it's interesting mm. to explore it further mm. but yeah fun fun difficult i think yeah it's it's more motivating as well to to be as a group at the beginning yes the, um, the place is also very important mm. peaceful peaceful because when we are at home and um, if you live with someone yeah, it's quite difficult mm. to find <laughs> your, your, your den your time. or you are quite corner so first we need to get some experience, get inspiration, form the temple, the meditation center. And after you have established mindfulness and concentration very well, you have learned the technique very well, and then you know how to deal with distraction or agitation very well, then it doesn't matter where you are, you can still practice. Your first time as well? Yes. Okay, how you find it? Um, Difficult? <coughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, mm. Again. Mm. Well, at least you know that your mind has been wondering. Mm. Yeah? Well, in our daily life, you know it. Well, in our, in our daily, daily life, we rarely know it. We just let go, we just, just let it flow. When we come to do just one sit, yeah, just one sit, although during the whole meditation, sitting meditation, more than 90% of your mind has been somewhere else. But you know that your mind has been somewhere else. Or at least you acknowledge it. Uh, that is good enough. Mm. And then by days, you will, you will feel that you are 
better and better. It's like with the train the monkey. Yes, we can't train monkey for one day and then put the monkey into the circus. Mm. So imagine when we were when we were very young, when we learned how to write, how to read. How long it did it take? A single day? A single day or not? A, a, a English? No, in French. French, yeah. Bonjour. <laughs> Yeah, but you are living and working in yeah. London. Mm. Yeah. Any question? Can you meditate with open eyes? Yes, yes. The reason why meditators are suggested to close the eyes because by closing the eyes, you will avoid from distraction. Yes, from what you see. Yes. If you are sleepy, you may open your eyes, and then you may close it, close your eyes again. Yeah. When we do walking meditation, you do walking with the eyes open. Yeah. But when you do sitting, it's better to keep the eye closed, as I said before, to avoid distraction from what you see. Just observe the mind, because the eyes are closed. The ears, we do not pay attention to what we hear. Or whenever you hear something, acknowledge it. Hearing, hearing, then let go. So just focus on what is going on in the mind. Either distraction or agitation. Observe it. Yes, when we open our eyes, we will see something in front of us, and then we will start thinking about what we see. So you understand now why you are suggested to close your eyes? Yeah. yeah. Can you close your eyes while walking? Well, if you close your eyes while you are walking, you might um, hit someone <laughs> <laughs> next to you, or you may walk. You, you you may not walk straight. Yes, if you close. It's happened before when we had meditation class here many years ago when the when the temple was newly established here in Wimbledon. <coughs> Um, the man and who 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 was an ex monk, he he was he's English, and his name is Peter. He wrote the book Prafaran, an English monk. Yes, I think if you can find his book, it, it is a quite interesting book. He told the experience of being a Buddhist monk in Buddhist monasteries. When he first came here, and because the teacher did not say clearly. Do not close your eyes when you do walking meditation. So mm -hmm. everyone close their eyes and then they end up <laughs> cl clutching each other. <laughs> <coughs> Although you open your eyes, but you don't need to pay attention to what you see because you focus on the movement. You know, when we say something without attention, we won't say it. Yeah, when you look at something, uh, um, you can you can imagine when you are mindless. When you are mindless, <laughs> and when you are, um, when you have absent mind. When you have been thinking about something, or when you have just um, broken with some friends or lover, you can't see what you in, even in front of you. That's because you lack intention. You lack attention. Although you have a good eyesight, but you do not really pay attention to what you say, then you won't say it. So the saying will occur because of three factors. And what are the three factors? Your eyesight are good, your attention, and your intention. So with these three factors and then seeing we occur. When we do walking meditation, we observe right moving, left moving, or right goddess, left goddess. It doesn't matter what what phrase you use. The point is you use the mental laboring that can um, 
can convey the, the meaning of what you are doing at that moment. You can use your own language, you can use French. So I, I prefer to use the pre press right moving rather than right go that's left go that's yes I thought this makes more sense when I when we use the the press right moving because we are learning how to be at the present moment the press left or right go does is translated from the the Thai language Kwa ya no. Yes, kwa ya no. Yeah, three words. Kwa ya no. Right go thus. Left go thus. Mm. Perhaps you can close your eyes and walk on your own at home. And see what happened. I did close my eyes a little bit during the yeah. presentation today. It didn't. It, it, it went mm. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't walk into it. When you close your eyes, yeah, when you do sitting meditation, just close your eyes like you when you are about to sleep. When you are going to sleep, do not close your eyes like this. That is not good. Just close your eyes gently. It's from time to time if you feel tension or pressure, you may open your eyes and then close your eyes again. Mm. Would you ever say anything out loud if you're meditating by yourself? For example, saying hearing... Well, then the out loud men mental labouring may be of help at the beginning. Yeah, I found it was helpful. Yes, because it helps it. It help you to develop concentration. And later on, you have to drop it, mm. because it will become too cumbersome. So you better let it go. Um, we have three, three kinds of laborings in Bali, parigamma, and we call we call it parigamma. Parigamma means you say it out loud. But after you practice for a while, you will feel that you will concentrate on, on the laboring, not the actual movement. Okay. Yeah, so you have to let go. So parigamma is needed at the beginning. And then when you achieve some level of practice, then you have to let go. We don't need it. We just observe the motion. We just observe the movement. Mm. When you move, when you wave your hand like this, when you move your hand like this, you may close your eyes. You can still feel the motion. You don't need to say moving, 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 moving. Yes, at first we need to say out loud, moving, moving, moving. Even say in the mind, right, moving, moving, placing, placing, placing. Yeah. Um, in some meditation centers, the masters are very meticulous. They go into every detail. Yeah, for example, when you before you start walking meditation, they will tell the meditators to lift the hand up slowly and mindfully, lifting, lifting, lifting like this. Placing, 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 placing. Yeah. And also at the moment when they are about to do sitting meditation, they will dial three times slowly <coughs> and mindfully. Mm. And the reason why that meditators are told to slow down the movement because by slowing down it will help meditators to improve mindfulness. If we just walk too fast and then we can't see the detail. If we walk slowly, right moving and you can see it clearly. And you can look at the electric fan when the electric fan is on, you can't see its breaths. When you switch it off, when it's turning slowly, 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 you will see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone doesn't get used to 
doing things slowly. Yes, some people do not get used to get doing things slowly. They prefer to do things quickly. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most of the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most of the things that I will do, I will do quickly. Like yeah. That. Yeah. But if I'm, uh, for example, drawing or coloring, I'll do it slowly. Yeah. In our daily life, yes, we have to do many things quickly. But sometimes, we, when we have need to do like a painting or drawing, we can't do it quick, quickly. Or when you want to put the um, cotton into the needle, you can't do it that quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I have heard the Chinese people do not get used to doing things slowly. <laughs> yes. And there uh, was one Chinese woman who went to join the retreat in Bangkok. She complained to the master. Oh, master, I couldn't do things slowly like you told me. Okay, everything in your life you do it quickly? Yes. And what about when you want to put cotton to the needle? Yeah, I have to do that slow. But not everything that we have to do it quickly. Yes, we can choose to do it slowly. But we don't need to be slow all the time. When we go back to live our normal life, we have to do things normally. But what we gain from meditation and practice is to be more mindful. We know how to be mindful. Mm. <coughs> I think when you slow things down, mm. it's already kind of more or less the meditative process starting from the, at this point when you make a cup of tea mm. if you slow yourself down and allow time and to settle mm. not do it through the rush it's already you know clears your mind down and settles your mind down so in a way kind of me- meditative process yeah more or less is there mm. so um, well, you can start to be mindful from the moment that you wake up in the morning. You may observe your first thought after you wake up. And then, when you go to the bathroom, you acknowledge it. You don't need to do things slowly, do things normally, but you know what you are doing. So, For example, when you brush your teeth, just brushing, brushing, you know that you are brushing. Right. Yeah. <coughs> and this, <coughs> if you can do this, it will be very helpful for your practice and you can make progress quickly. And what do I mean by progress is that you feel that you are more mindful and you feel that you can deal with the situation in a better way, not make it worse. Yes. And when we need to make any decision, and if your mind is clear, so you rarely make a wrong decision. If you're overwhelmed by anger or by um, desire, you may make a wrong decision. So many things we come later after, after we apply meditation in our daily life. And each individual may have different experience. And because each individual has different way of life and different experience. Are you okay to stand like that? Yes, I sit most of the time. You sit most of the time. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you very much for, all right. yeah. for all this time to go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Please feel free. Yeah. Please feel free. Yeah. Thank you very much. You come together. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Have a nice Okay.
Ich. Yeah, okay, yes. Uh, how long have you been a monk? It's in 1987. Thank you. When I was, I, I was not this monk, it's in 1987. And then in 1995, I received a full ordination as a Buddhist monk. I have lived in this country for nearly eight years. Yeah. But I have moved in here about six, five months ago. Oh, okay. Yes. We have another question. Some people say that after a while, practicing meditation helps you to find answers, like, which are inside you. But how can you find an answer when you're not thinking? The, and the whole purpose is to stop your books, to mess with your mind. Well, meditation is not to stop thinking. You can make a plan, you can think about it. Yes. But when you, you, for example, when you're about to do something, you can be mindful before doing that. And then you can just do things normally. When you have finished that, you come back to be mindful again. Just do things normally. Um, uh, many, many years ago, um, the um, lecturer at the university in Thailand asked me, and he's, he's American. And he's teaching economics at the university, and he said, "Because I'm, I'm teaching economics, I can't stop thinking. How can I meditate?" So we have to be clear: meditation is not to stop thinking. Meditation is the way to understand how the mind works. Yes. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. I just don't understand how it works. Yes. And you are working in the area of finance? No, no, no. Ecology. Ecology. Yes. But you, you, question, you ask the question about finance? No, no. Or I just finance. Huh? No, no. You, I have heard that you mentioned the word finance something. Or you have... Uh, 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 what's wrong? No. Can no. you repeat the question again? <laughs> you... I don't see how you can um, yeah, think in this to like all the troubles and or like stop thinking about all this. I don't really know what was the question. <laughs> well, we can choose to think. And if we think about something and then it entails suffering and pain, you better not think about <coughs> it. Or if something makes you feel pain, yes? you just try to begin on the side. Huh? Well, you can choose. Many people suffer because of the, the way they think. Yeah? People suffer because of the way they think. Yeah. And if they have negative thought, and they will have more pain, they will have more suffering. So we need to let go. Let go that kind of negative thinking. I find it really hard when you have all this negative thought and you stomach hurts. Um, like well, you step, step by step, little by little, we just, we can't just let it go straight away. We have to do it a little bit, a little bit, bit by bit. Yes, we need to change our attitude toward things. So by nature, the human mind is negative. Okay. This is the nature of the mind. But we can change our attitude when we learn more, when we understand more. Mm. We still can change it. Because it gets easier. I find uh, today when I was meditating that I had a lot of aching in my back. Mm. Does that get easier or do you learn to live with it? In a way? Because you, your body does not get used to sitting in one position for too long. Mm and this is normal. And after you get used to it, and do you do exercise sometimes? Yeah. Do you go, jo um, do you go to the gym? Uh, yes. yes, and if you go to the gym, imagine when you go there for the first time, 
you feel aching when you go when you come back home. But if you go every day or regularly, you are fine. Yeah. That's because our body start to get used to it. Like when we come in to meditate for the first time, because you you have to sit for twenty or thirty minutes. This is normal. Our blood circulation does not flow smoothly. And then when we d when we sit or stand or even when we stay in one position for too long, it is natural that aching will develop. At night, we n we don't know that we keep turning around. You know why? This is the the reaction from our body. We are not conscious when we turn around. Even when we sit on a chair, watching television, we keep moving all the time. After sitting like this for a while, and then oh, we move automatically. That is because the body will react to pain automatically. But not not the body, but because the mind, the mind orders the body to move. The body cannot move itself without the the order from the mind. So mind and body are like the boss and servant. The body can do anything without the mind, and the mind can do anything without the body. The mind can think, but the mind cannot walk. The mind can think to walk. The mind can think to make cup tea, or to speak. But the body speaks, not the mind. You okay? Yeah. You. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Welcome. Once again, I asked this question, but I'm, you know, I, I was really thinking about it for some time about the technique, uh, about very uh, like to go into the detail. So when uh, what I find helpful is to uh, hold the breath and do the breath out slowly. By doing this, you know, I don't know personally, I find like I get more settled and. Uh, if I've got any distractions or thoughts. So the question is, can you, I don't know, to experiment or to kind of try to adjust, you know, your, your breathing uh, technique or the way how you do it to fit, you know, to, to get connected to the mind because it's obviously the, the mm -hmm. breath and the mind and the body, the whole, yeah, well, in, in a way like you, 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 you yes, from my from my experience, I have heard that in some meditation centers, meditators are told to keep, to keep the breathing in control yes. by like um, breathing faster or harder. Mm -hmm. It works for them, but from our tradition, we do not recommend meditators <coughs> to do that because when you want to control the breathing. You in fact create the concept of self. Yes. So we always recommend the meditators to breathe in and breathe out normally. If your breathing disappears, don't panic. Just let it be like that. At times and then your breathing will come back. Yeah. This is the technique we use, but I also have Heard that in some other meditators, uh, meditation centers, they have the technique to control the breathing in order to to develop more concentration. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, m different meditation masters have different experience. So this is reason the reason why that we have different techniques. Yeah. You may try that technique. And if you think it goes for you, 
it may be right for you, but at a certain point, from my understanding, it will create the concept of self because you want to control it. When you want to control, that means you create you, mm -hmm. you create I. I want to control it. I want to keep concentration. I want to have that concentration. So the purpose of meditation practice is to let go of our eagerness. Mm -hmm. It's not to create eagerness. Mm -hmm. So just be mindful about the breath. Yes, be mindful of the breathing. That's, that's all. Really. Yes. yes. If br if your breath disappears, acknowledge it. And I remember a story of. Um, of a man, because in in, in the, um, the part of purification of Visuddhimagga, it explained how to develop uh, mindfulness or concentration. Um, in the section of br mindfulness of breathing, at a certain time, the breathing may disappear. So when breathing disappears, meditators no need to panic. It will be like um, a farmer who use a water buffalo to plow the field, and then when he finished his job, then la just let the water buffalo go. And you don't need to go into the jungle to find the water buffalo. Just go to the lake to fish your water buffalo. So your breathing may disappear for some time. But it will come back eventually, and you know through. When the breathing is very subtle, you may feel you do not breathe in or breathe out. In fact, it doesn't disappear. It just, it is because very, it is very subtle. It's very subtle, and it's very subtle. It's like you do not breathe in or breathe out at all. Wait for a while until things come back as usual. Then you will feel that you are breathing in, breathing out again. Mm. So now you are following rising, falling, or yes, I follow. Mm. It's just mm. There's always like something more, something extra to do, mm. to eat, to read. And that comes from when I was doing yoga practice years ago. Mm. And we were doing this, you know, basic breath uh, exercises. Yeah. One nostril, another, and just to control and enhance the breath. Mm. So when I apply a little bit, from there to here, mm. then I've, I, I, I did find it useful in the past. Yeah. And it was simply coming mind down and getting rid of, um, uh, you know, obstacles in the mind. And mm. Just mm. Yeah, you feel that you, you see rising and falling clearly, you may add more, more meditation subjects like a sitting, touching, and by moving around, sitting in the whole body, mm. touching, go to the um, touching point where you feel very clear. Yes, mm. you may go to the left, yes, sitting, yes, touching, and then rising, falling, sitting, touching, rising, falling, sitting, touching. It, it is the way to keep the mind busy. At the same time, you will be, you will be able to develop mindfulness in detail. Just give more jobs to the mind. Also, even like taking the cup slowly. Yeah, yeah, that's that be that be help. Yes, so that be help. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. <laughs>
Mm. The technique you mentioned, there's a space in between the breathing in and breathing out, yeah. and you focus on that space. Yeah. Um, Ajahn Brahm talked about it, he taught that technique. Mm -hmm. When you breathe in, breathe out, and he said, if you can never find your peace of mind because your thought goes all over the place, so just watch the space in between, and that will make you become more peaceful. So he's taught that, so yeah. it's very similar to what you described. But not making a pause, like a one, two, three. I think four. he did mention that there's a little pause, and you look at yeah, that pause, and there's a peace in that tiny little pause. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so it's a different technique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it for tonight. Mm. Mm. Okay, see you later.